Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to study about the relationship between the soil moisture and the irrigation. So let's start. Now, when we look at the soil moisture irrigation relationship, that is basically related to the amount of water that we have supplied to the field and between the water that has been absorbed by the soil. That is the relationship showing between these two. Now, when we supply the irrigation water, let's say at this point, the cross section that has been shown that is related to a field. Now, this is the irrigation water that has been supplied. So, this is the irrigation water that has been supplied. Now, out of that irrigation water that we have supplied, some part of this water that will drain under the action of the gravity. And as there is some natural water table which is available below the ground level, so let's say this is the water table, so that means the water will be present below this level, which is known as the ground water level. So this is the level of the ground water. This top surface that is representing the ground level, GL that means the ground level. Now when we look at the crop, this has been shown as the crop, so this plant that has been growing it will be having certain roots which will be going inside the ground now that part of the ground that is having the roots present of the plant that is known as the soil zone or the root zone of the plant and the total portion cross section that has been shown that is usually known as the zone of rock fracture this is the zone of rock fracture out of which certain part is occupied by the ground water up to which the water table is present and the level of the zone fracture which is present above water table that means there is no water present that means there is air present so such zone is known as the zone of aeration in which the soil will be moist enough that means the water which is percolating through the ground and reaching the ground water level it will be moisturizing the soil which is present in between. That's why this region is also known as the soil moisture region. Now out of this soil moisture region, the first region is the zone occupied by the roots of the plant. That is known as the soil zone or the root zone. In the rest of the portion, there will be certain amount of water that will be coming up because of the capillary action of the voids which are present in the soil. So the part of the ground level, so the part of the soil moisture level, this zone which is getting recharged or which is getting moistened up because of the capillary action that is known as the capillary zone and rest of the zone between the root zone and the capillary zone that is known as the intermediate zone. Now the zone which is to be studied for the irrigation purpose that is belonging to this soil zone or the root zone of the plant. So we will magnify this and we will study that only. So, let's say this was the ground level on which the crop was present. This is representing the ground level over which the crops were present. So, I'm magnifying that. So, let's say this is the crop which is present. So, just not showing the only one crop. So, let's say there are number of crops which are present alongside this ground level. There will be certain root zone of this plant which will be extending in the downward direction this is representing the root zone of the plant okay so this is representing the soil moisture level now the region that we are going to study as i told you that is the soil zone or that was also known as the root zone this is the region that we are going to study now in the soil zone or the root zone if we plot the curve or if we look at the coordinates so that is representing the time and this is representing the water content okay so in this region if you look at the this back diagram here this is representing the root zone we are going to study this part only this root zone part now in this the water that will be available that will be because of the 
irrigation or the rainfall purpose that means external sources of the water because the water table is present below this level so the water when we supply the irrigation or because of the rainfall when it is continuously falling onto the ground surface so that means the ground surface will be filled up with the water so the water will be present up to this ground level only so when the entire field is flooded with the water then such level of the water that is known as the field capacity that means this is the maximum level of the water which can be stored in the ground this is known as the field capacity now when the water is filled up here there is certain level up to which if the water is present let's say if the water is present up to this level only then the crops are not able to suck this water they are not able to extract this water for the growth of the plants so such type of water which is not available for the plants to grow such type of water is known as the non available water that is not available for the growth of the plant now if the water is present up to this level that means the water is not available for the extraction by the plants that means even if the water is available up to this level the water is not going to be consumed by the plant and in that case the plants will dry up such drying up of the plants that is known as the wilting so if you look at this diagram here if the water is present up to the sufficient level let's say that it was field capacity so the plant will be blossoming and so the plant will be blossoming and that will be having the full growth of the plant but if the water level is decreasing if the but if the water level is decreasing then the plants will dry up and the stage where the plant is completely dried up that is known as the wilting and so as you can see that when the water level is decreasing as you can see when the water level is decreasing the plant is starting to dry up and there will be a stage when the plant will be completely dried up this stage of the plant that is known as the wilting and the water level which is present at this point that is known as the permanent wilting point so this level of the water at which the plant is completely dried up and there is no scope for it to come back that point of the water level that is known as the permanent wilting point and at this stage even if you supply the tons of water then the plant will not be able to come back to its original shape that means either the water should be at the field capacity or at somewhere above the permanent wilting point because if the water level reaches the permanent wilting point then we would not be able to grow back the plant so that means the irrigation is to be carried out when the water level is between these two levels when the water level is between these two levels that is the field capacity and the permanent wilting point now let's say if this initially this was the amount of water which was present for the growth of the plant this is the water which is available for the plant as we have already seen that the level of the water below this permanent wilting point that is not available so that means its total green color water level that is known as the available water for the growth of the plant this water can be extracted by the plant for its growth now this available water now when the water is consumed by the plants so this water level will be decreasing so slowly slowly let's say this water level is decreasing so as the time progresses this water level is decreasing so there will be a point when the water level reaches this permanent wilting point so if we supply the water or if we irrigate the field at this point then there may be chances that once a while we may miss this timeline and this water level may go beyond this permanent wilting point so that's why to have the safety what we have done we have marked a certain level above this permanent wilting point in such a way that once the water level in such a way that once the water level reaches up to that point at that point only we irrigate the field and then again the water level reaches up to the field capacity then again the water will be consumed by the plant and it will again go back to the 
minimum level and then again at this point we will irrigate the field and then again at this point we will irrigate the field so that's how the irrigation will be continuing up now what are these levels so this level of the water that should be marked so that the water is easily available that is known as the optimum moisture content this level of the water that should be present at any time in the field that is known as the optimum moisture content and the reason for such level to maintain is that the water is readily available out of this total available water this amount of water that will be readily available that means the plant is able to extract this water which is readily available easily while this non readily available water the remaining water of this available portion that is not readily available that means there is certain difficulty for the plant to extract this water so if we understand it in, in totality the water below the water table level that means below this level that is known as the ground water level and above the water table so the level of the ground so the part of the ground level that is present above the water table level that is known as the soil moisture or that is also known as the zone of aeration now out of this zone of aeration now the portion within this zone of aeration in which the roots of the plants they penetrate to absorb the moisture or the nutrients from the soil that is known as the soil or the root water zone so when the water falls over the ground that may be either due to the irrigation or that may also be because of the rainfall that is the natural way of the irrigation now a part of this water which is falling over the ground that is getting absorbed in the root zone and the rest that flows under the gravitational action and that meets the ground water table then we looked at the field capacity that is the now the field capacity is the maximum level of the water that is stored by the plants or the ground that is maintained the field capacity is the maximum level of the water that is maintained by the ground when it is drained for the number of days for the sufficient period and that may be up to 2 to 5 days now out of that field capacity there are certain portion of the field capacity usually that is classified into two that is the available water or the non available water now the available water that is because of the capillary action now how do we measure this field capacity what is the relation behind that that we will derive now so this field capacity so this field capacity that is defined as the water content this is basically the water content which is the ratio of the quantity of water which the soil can retain over its surface against the gravitational action to the quantity of the dry soil for example if we look at the certain area let's say if we are looking at the 1 square meter surface area of the field this is the area which we are considering now over this area let's say this is the water which is present let's say this is the level of the water which is present on top of this area so this depth of the water this depth of the water that is let's say d and this area is of 1 square meter so the field capacity according to this formula that is defined as the quantity of water over this field divided by the quantity of the soil of the same volume so if we look at this volume of the given area that is area into depth so area that we have considered that is the unit area of 1 square meter into the depth is d meter so the volume that will be equal to d cubic meter this is the total volume now according to the weight density if we look at this weight density and in particular we are looking about the dry weight density that means till now the water has not been applied to the field the soil is dry that is denoted by gamma d and that is basically the weight of the soil that is ws or simply i am writing the weight of the soil that is w soil 
divided by the volume of the soil. Now in this case the weight of the soil that will be equal to gamma d into the volume and volume just now we have calculated that is equal to d cubic meter. So that will be the weight of the soil or the quantity of the soil in the same volume. Now that means the quantity of water that means the quantity of water that is retained in the soil that will be equal to field capacity into the quantity of the soil or the weight of the soil from this relation we can calculate this one so we know the field capacity value that is certain percentage into the quantity of soil that is is equal to gamma d into d so that is the weight of the water or the quantity of the water that is retained over the soil surface now the density of the water that is denoted by gamma w that is the weight of the water to the volume of the water so from here if we want to calculate the volume of water that is stored so the volume of water that will be equal to weight of the water that we have just calculated in the previous step that was field capacity into the gamma d that is the dry weight, unit weight of the soil into d divided by this will be gamma w now this was the volume of the water in the unit area so this volume of water that can be written as the area into the depth of the water that is is equal to gamma d upon gamma w just rearranging the terms into the field capacity into d now this area of the field that we have considered to be unit area so that is one square meter so therefore the depth of the water which is stored in the ground because of the irrigation that we have supplied that is the ratio of the gamma d upon gamma w into the field capacity into the depth of the water which is applied over the field this d was the depth this d was the depth of the water so this was the depth of the water retained on the soil while this capital D, this small d that was the depth of the water or that is the depth of the root zone that is simply known as the depth of the root zone or the water applied so that's how we calculate the depth of water which is retained on the soil in terms of the field capacity now based upon this only there are certain note points so this is the depth of the water this was the level of the field capacity then we looked at this optimum moisture content and the most so the minimum level the least level of the water that was known as the permanent wilting point so if we supply the water up to this level up to the field capacity then this much depth of the water will be retained in the soil now if we supply the let's say the water between these two capacity let's say if the, we supply the water between these two capacity then what will be the depth so in that case if we are supplying let's say this is the w1 water content and this is w2 water content in that case the depth of the water which is retained on the soil that is measured as the ratio of gamma d upon gamma w into w1 minus w2 into d that's how we calculate the depth of the water retained on the soil between the two water contents so the total field capacity that is not completely used by the plant because it is not very easy to extract the water below the optimum moisture content level so that's why we differentiate between this now this optimum moisture content level that is usually not given but we assume it to be 75 to 80 percent of the difference between the field capacity and the permanent wilting point that means the 75 to 80 percent of the available water now if we are having the level of water in between any of these two levels or at any point then the water which is required to take the level back to the field capacity this difference 
that is known as the that is known as the soil moisture deficiency now what about this frequency of irrigation so just now we have seen that if we represent this moisture content on the y axis and the time on the x axis so if we supply the water at this point so the water will be consumed by the plants so that means the level of the water that will be decreasing as the time passes on once the water level that reaches up to certain level then we supply the irrigation water back so that the water level that reaches the field capacity that means the maximum level of the water that can be achieved by the plants so that is again taken back to the field capacity level then again plant consumes the water and again the water level falls back then again we irrigate at the same point and then again the water level reaches to the field capacity and the similar process that goes on so this point that denotes the frequency of irrigation that means when we reach this point that is defining that how frequent we should supply the irrigation water this ordinate of the x axis that will be representing the time this will be representing the time after which we need to supply the water and that will be defining the frequency of the irrigation so let's say if we are getting the value as 9.1 days that after 9.1 days this water is taken back to this level this below level that means we need to supply the water at the ninth day otherwise on the 10th day it will be dried up because it will go beyond this level that we will understand with the help of one problem so let's look at the problem so the problem statement says that after how many days will you supply the water to the soil in order to ensure the sufficient irrigation of the given crop now certain parameters are given that the field capacity of the soil that is given as 28% the permanent wilting point that is given as 13% the dry density of the soil that is given as 1.3 gram per cc and the effective depth of the root zone that is also given as 70 cm the daily consumptive use of the water for the given crop that means the amount of water that is consumed by the crop daily that is 12 mm that means in one day the water consumed by the crop that is is equal to 12 mm now if we look at the solution of this problem we know from the definition of the available moisture the available moisture that is considered to be the difference between the field capacity the available moisture is the difference between the field capacity and the permanent wilting point so the field capacity that has been given that is 28% and the permanent wilting point that is 13%. So that means the available moisture is 15%. So if we draw the levels, this is the field capacity that is at 28% and the minimum level of the water that should not be present that is 13%. Now the difference between these two that is representing the available moisture. Now out of this we mark certain level at the optimum moisture content that means beyond this the water table should not fall this should not be fall the water level should not fall beyond this optimum moisture content now that is considered to be 75 to 80 percent of this difference of the available moisture so let's assume that because it has been given that assume any other data if not given now assuming that the optimum moisture content that is 80 percent of the available moisture that is our assumption because that value varies usually between 75 to 80 percent so we are considering that 80 percent of the moisture available that is the level of the optimum moisture content so that means the optimum moisture content that will be 0.8 times of the 15%. So if we look at this value that comes out to be 12%. So that means this optimum moisture level is at the 12%. That means this difference that is 12%. So the optimum moisture content level that will not be 12%. That should you remember. 
this is the optimum moisture level and this optimum moisture content that will be the 28% minus this 12% of the readily available moisture. So that is the readily available moisture and the optimum moisture content that will be 16%. So this level is 16% which is above the permanent wilting point of 13%. Now we need to calculate the depth of the water which will be stored in the root zone. So the depth of the water so the depth of the water which is stored that is usually represented by dw the formula for that that is is equal to gamma d upon gamma w into the difference between the two water level the difference between the two water level that is w1 and w2 into the depth of the root zone now we know that this is the field capacity this is the optimum moisture content and this is the permanent wilting point. Initially the water was taken at this level. Initially the water level was taken at the field capacity. Now as the water is consumed, it drops to the optimum moisture content level. And when again we supply the irrigation water, it goes back to the field capacity. And then again it is lost. That means in between these two levels only, we are supplying the irrigation water or the irrigation is provided to maintain the level of the water between these two water content only. So that means this field capacity that is considered to be the W1 and this optimum moisture content that will be considered as W2. Now keeping this in the background, now if we calculate this DW, that is the ratio of the gamma D upon gamma W into the difference between the field capacity and the optimum moisture content into the depth of the root zone. Now if we look at the data that has been given, so we know the field capacity that is 28%, we know the optimum moisture content level that is 16% that we have already calculated, that is 16%, the effective depth of the root zone that is small d that has been given to us as 70 centimeter. Now the another data that is required that is gamma d and the gamma w. So this gamma d and gamma w that is to be calculated. Now this gamma that is the weight density that is the multiplication of the mass density into the g that is the acceleration due to gravity. So for the soil that is the dry unit weight that will be rho d into g and similarly for the water that will be rho w into g. So if we take the ratio of these two, so this g will be cancelled out. That means gamma D upon gamma W can be written as rho D upon rho W. So this formula will be converted into rho D upon rho W into the field capacity minus optimum moisture content level into D. And that will be the formulation for the depth of the water which is stored. Now if we look back at the data, now if we look back at the data that has been given, so the dry density of this soil that is given as 1.3 gram per cc. So this rho d, that value is 1.3 gram per cc. And for the water, we already know this value, this is the standard value that you should remember, that is 1 gram per cc. So now placing all the values, now placing all the values in this equation, this is 1.3 divided by 1 gram per cc. The field capacity is 28% minus the optimum moisture content that is 16% into this depth is 70 cm. This will be the DW value. Now if you calculate this value, this will be 1.3 into 70 into, now if we differentiate this, now if we subtract these two values, so the answer will be 12%, so that is written as 0.12. Now the answer will be in centimeters. This is the depth of the water. So from the calculation, this depth of the water which will be stored, that is 10.92 centimeters. That means between these two levels, that is the field capacity and the optimum moisture content, the level of the water which is maintained, the depth which is stored, that is 10.92 centimeters. 
this is the depth of the water which is stored between these two levels now the data that has been given us in one day the water consumed by the crop that is 12 millimeter so we are requiring to calculate that how many days after how many days will we supply the water so the depth of water so the depth of water consumed by the plant that was given as 12 millimeter or that can be written as 1.2 centimeter that means 1.2 centimeter so that means the depth 1.2 centimeter depth of the water that is consumed by the plant in one day so 10.92 centimeter of the depth that will be consumed by the plant in 1 divided by 1.2 into 10.92 days now from here if you calculate this value that comes out to be equal to 9.1 days that means at this rate of the consumption of 1.2 centimeter per day this 10.92 centimeter of the water will be consumed by 9.1 days that means that means this water level will drop to this optimum moisture content level in 9.1 days now the decision is to be made at this point only because the calculation will be carried out at this point and the answer that you are getting that is 9.1 days now the decision is to be made that whether the irrigation is to be applied after 10 days because it is not possible that you are applying the irrigation between the day so either you will apply the irrigation water at the ninth day or at the 10th day that means after the nine days or after the 10th days so what you should remember that the minimum value is to be taken so for example in this case the water is to be applied for example in this case the water is to be applied after nine days because at 9.1 day the water will be completely consumed the water level will be exhausted and after that it will go beyond the optimum moisture level so before that only we will supply the irrigation water and that's why the frequency of the irrigation that will be after nine days so after every nine day you will be applying the irrigation water so that completes the soil moisture irrigation relationship now in the next video we will take a look at the principal crops and the different crop seasons in the india thank you